Hello, welcome to this 360 video training tutorial. Uh, this is episode one, because we're going to have several parts being connected together to cover several different aspects related to 360 video or say cinematic virtual reality production. And the reason of doing this tutorial is because in those days, physical travel to long distance places to do actual footage capturing may be hard for one or two uh, video makers to travel around. So we turn into this way of uh, try to train more people to get familiar with 360 video, 360 cameras, and then uh, production skills, techniques uh, accompanying them. So people can learn to use 360 videos and then this kind of immersive media to tell story and capture interesting things. And then we hope more people can learn to uh, do interesting stuff. So yeah, that's how everything is, is, is being done. And uh, so this is the episode one. And then I am going to cover something about 360 video basics. So assuming you're very new to this technology. And then in today's tutorial, this is overview. And I'm going to start by talking about what is 360 degree video and how I can use it because it's something new. And then I will do basic introduction of the cameras and technology related to it. And then will be the actual part where you are actually going to use the knowledge if you wanted to produce your own 360 video content, and such as preparing for the shooting and on the scene, what you should do, what you should avoid. And then I'm going to introduce you to two of the important um, skills we should apply to the capturing that I invented and then implemented myself and with my supervisors here in the lab and the triangle rules and the attention guidance. And also I'll talk about a little bit about audio and then uh, I will briefly go through the production workflow of 360 degree videos. But the detail of that will be in a episode two, which will be a more dedicated hands-on tutorial about actually doing it. So this one today is more like an overview of the knowledge. And then next episode, I will go into details and then show an actual demo of how I captured, set up, prepare, capture, and then do everything. So we will start it by talking about 360 degree videos. So essentially, we call it 360 degree videos. It's also a kind of video. So if you took a 360 video and have a look, it's actually just a, like a normal video files, like the one you are looking at now, but it's just come in different form and will be consumed in a different form. So on the slide, you can see on the left, is a 360 degree video being unwrapped uh, as a frame. So you will see the, some of the shadows think they are uh, like a distorted. That's because the video is not supposed to be presented in a familiar rectangular like that. Meanwhile, on the right, a conventional video, people are already very familiar with, including the one you are seeing now, is designed and then made to be played on a rectangular screen. So that's why you can see people, you can see there's a frame, but while 360 video is not designed for a frame. And then sometimes when we talk about 360 video, because it's part of virtual reality, people kind of confuse like, is it VR? Is it something that I can actually be in there and work around? Not exactly. To better tell about what is 360 video, what is actually like more like other VR games or you are more familiar with, and the 360 degree video is something we call a three, dot, three degrees of freedom. It means you can only look around inside it instead of walking around. While with many VR games where everything is computer generated, like the other part of the, 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 the video is showing now, is you are as if being immersed in the real world and it means you can look around and move around. So essentially the 360 video is just more like a wrapping around a video frame around you. So you are in the center of the spherical screen. And then because you are in there, you got the freedom to look around like as if you do in the real life, because we turn our head and eyes to look around to the physical world. You, you are familiar with that thing, that freedom to explore. So you, you will get this idea or the feeling of immersive that, uh, oh, I am as if I'm there, I'm inside a video and I'm at the place where the, the visual is showing me. So you got the feeling of immersive, but not that much comparing to um, like VR games or other more intensive um, experiences, including the voxel videos, if you have heard something of that. And then 
you will ask saying like, uh, how can I make 360 videos? Well, 360 video is different from VR games. They don't need a lot of coding or uh, like marbling around the uh, game engines. They are produced by using a 360 camera, like the one I have here. This is the camera uh, I use a lot during my research and the production. And also you need a computer and or a mobile phone, because nowadays mobile phones are powerful enough so to stitch the raw footage. I will talk more about it, why there's a stitching. And the 360 camera has, like video cams, has a lot of different options on the market right now. In, so, such as a, a little bit early days, we used the One X, uh, or the Recon CRV, or the Garmin Verb, the, uh, the, these, those three you see on the upper left. And then the Insta360 One R, the One X2 are the uh, very popular and consumer level cameras. They are designed to be universal for most of the scenarios people are going to do for consumer level, including like this is a One R here. We also have the One X2. I didn't bring into the table today, but you can see the pictures there. And then there are also big ones used by those pro video makers, such as Insta360 Pro 2. Even its name, it's telling you it's an advanced camera. They, I have a picture of here on the lower right corner. You can see the size, it's, it's way bigger. In the picture, you can see there's the one R on, on the other end of the table while the Pro 2 is a big like metal ball and the size tells it. And that's how you're going to use the cameras. The cameras you're going to use, you can choose one of them like depending on your budget or the actual need. But it, it, essentially, they all produce um, 360 cameras. And then there, one of the, the common feature I'm just going to touch a little bit today is all 360 camera has multiple lenses like the one that I have here and remove the lens protecting cover because it's important. You will see they have two lenses. The one is on each side, there's one here and then another one on the other side. So the, those uh, are fisheye lenses. They're extruding from the side of the, the body. So each of them gonna capture 180 degree of the the entire scene and then when they are put together 180 180 becomes 360 so that's how the name 360 video or 360 camera come about and then for other bigger cameras there are more lenses and then the lenses covers more area but eventually when they are put together they still cover the same 360 degrees of the frame so that's the how the 360 cameras and then how they um, like basically capture the scene and then that means those things you need to produce a 360 video. And then when you have it, you're not going to watch it normally on a, on a screen like a regular mobile phone video. And then to watch a 360, DV, 360 video, we're gonna need some um, special gears. So one way to do it is to watch it on a mobile device such as a mobile phone. And then you can use a browser or, or dedicated app like such as like YouTube mobile on your phones and then because your phone has a gyroscope so you can just put on the video on here and then you can just like a tilt around to, to, to point a phone at the different orientation you will see different part of the 360 video. So to watch a 360 degree video you can also use a desktop PC and then via a browser so in there when you, when you have a 360 video you, instead of or ch changing orientation you just like use your mouse to to drag the screen to, to turn the, the, the image, to turn the image to the orientation that you want to look. But it will be like a less, less um, immersive. And of course, the, the, the recommended way is to watch a 360 via a virtual reality headset. Either can be as simple as a Google Cardboard or uh, as, uh, as fancy as a standalone like Oculus Quest or some other devices. But their idea is because it put on your, when you, when you put a VR headset on your head, what you're gonna do is just turn your, tilt your head around and then the VR headset knows which orientation you're looking at and then you will naturally feel like you are looking at that part of the image of the entire 360 video. And it feels more natural because you are not using your hand to drag around, but just like you are doing in real world, you turn your head and you will feel the most immersive and the natural way to when watching. So that's also the recommended way of doing it. But now you got like an idea what 360 videos are and then how they are being produced, how people are going to watch it and what's the, the characteristics of this uh, video type that's comparing to conventional video. The next question I'm going to touch is when should we use 360 videos? So this is not a universal thing. It's not say it's fancy, it looks more advanced. So I just wanted to take 360 video of everything. People have been making mistakes like that. And it turns out the video does not serve the purpose or even can be worse compared to just using a regular flat 
conventional video when when it's actually better. So scenarios that are good for 360 videos is when you want to capture the environment and then deliver the feeling of being there in that environment. So that would be good for 360 videos, such as following Dean to the Father Nui of the Malai and then listen to him talking about the house, the, the environment. So if you capture that onto a 360 video and when the viewer watch it, even especially when he or she is watching via a VR headset, he or she will feel like as if just being there in the Father Nui, standing beside Dean and then looking around in the house and listening to him talking. So it will be feel very as if being there or called presence. Uh, or if you are traveling to say uh, Rocky Ura and then you capture that as a 360 video and then you will give the viewer the feeling that they are standing on the beach of the island and then looking at the waves, so this environmental feeling of being there. And then in other scenarios such you are introducing the basic operations of the camera and you want to show a lot of the details like what I'm doing now and you should just using the regular conventional video because you can focus onto the details while 360 video cannot and you are not delivering the, the feeling of being somewhere you are delivering actual contents and details or you want to show around um, the same place that you want to show more texture of the rocks that you pick up on the beach and because you want people to pay attention to more of the details instead of the feeling of just being on the on the beach so on the, those scenarios uh, conventional video is recommended so there's no need just use 360 video but, but when you are trying to show details actually so these are how you're going to decide and consider which kind of video you are going to use and then at a 360 or just normal but in the, the, the one of the examples such as the storytelling in the Fale Nui I would recommend using 360 video because it's more about being there and then there's, there's this like emphasize is not different so say when you actually decided you are going to make some 360 videos and then you need to prepare for it because it's a little bit different from uh, traditional videos so the, there are several things you need to consider and then also remember they are all pointing towards one of the very important characteristic or the feature of 360 degree video is the camera captures everything so you might be already familiar with traditional cameras such as point and shoot or mobile phones to do uh, video making that the lens is pointing somewhere and there's a rectangular frame everything in the frame will be in shot everything outside frame such on the back side of the camera is not going to be in shot this is not the case with 360 videos or 360 cameras 360 camera because the, the setup the configuration and because it's a 360 like I have introduced it is going to capture everything in a scene there's nothing to hide so that means you have to pay attention to the location in the scene you have to think about where you're going to place the camera and then where's the everything everything else like the people or everyone around you and then because people is going to watch the 360 video and from the point where the camera is located like the camera is we say the camera is like the viewer's eye so you want you don't want to place the camera at some place that is very weird if you would like to, to do, you can think about this like for some place will you, will you place your visitor the head or someone over there to look out of the world whether it will be normal or weird or not and so the same applies to the 360 camera when you're going to placement another thing is the crowd control because like I said the, the camera are going to capture everything so you want a lot of uh, non-related people in the scene and then if they're disturbing the, the entire content same as ambient noise so you might want to have a look when you are capturing something here is there someone else talking or anything else happening on the different area so these are gonna, going to be paying attention and also lighting so normally we would recommend using natural light such as if uh, the, the room has a big window and then you got good lighting inside and then th that which is good but if it's a li little bit dark you may want to turn on some some lights but if you want to use uh, artificial lights you have to think about how am I going to set up the lights because everything you set up in the scene is going to eventually being captured into the video so if you have a lot of tripods and the lightings and cables everywhere people are gonna feel like this is more like a, a filming set up, set up instead of actually being some realistic place so these are these things you have to prepare before shooting so you have to you're going to scout the location and then have a look at where you're going to do it and then what, what I would recommend is to make a plans because normally when you are set up on the on the on the camera and then start rolling and then you don't have the chance to adjust in the middle because 
you, you are not supposed to be uh, like standing by the camera because it's going to capture your face and the people are going to ask who is this person standing by the camera why I am listening to this person start telling well there's another guy here just standing so close to me which is weird so you're going to most likely hide away to a different place it means you, you don't have a chance to adjust the camera in the middle so you plan ahead such as what will the presenter talk about is everything he or she is going to talk about nearby is it visible to the camera and then, then visible to the camera means it's visible to the viewer and then you have to think about where the camera the present and other people are going to be most likely others are going to be hiding and then I'll talk more about it when I, when I introduce the triangle rules about these elements in the scene I call all of these elements and then you want to more about thinking about and because you have you always have several important things that's going to be covered in your story are they visible are they like relatively clean and then uh, can show the details and the, in the relationship to the camera to the storyteller to the host so are they in a relatively good position so these are the things you're going to make out the plan like a like a, a draw a, a map or something you have to lay out the spatial arrangement and the placement of everything in there so because we said arrangement and the place on the cameras so there are several tips and then pros and accounts I wanted to uh, provide and these are um, something that people are more relatively to ignore or forget if they're new to 360 video production but uh, I want to introduce it to you so you can get a better idea of what they are so uh, when you set up the camera and I will just like use the tripod or something here so we have to uh, just temporarily using the kit and but more about the actual gears will be covered in the different video so normally do the setup is I use a selfie stick with a tripod so the camera can firmly stand up so the tripod extends like this and I'm going to put the camera on top this is um, one of the most commonly used setup that I for most of production so when the camera is being set up like what I said you want to treat and then regard it as if it's the eye of the viewer so, so normally when you talk to someone and uh, you're going to put in the appropriate distance and on the height so I would like to um, recommend you place the height of the camera same as the eye of the storyteller well now the storyteller is me so eye height will be the same so I will just increase a little bit so the camera is as about my eye height and because I'm sitting and then the camera well I don't have a chair nearby so actually what I should do is to place the camera onto a chair and then make it same eye height with me and that means the the viewer when actually watching the footage will find himself or herself as if sitting in the chair next to me and about the same height and will, he or she will feel most most comfortable and then the distance also matters that because of the feeling of presence and then the immersive people will naturally feel as if he or she is there with the other storyteller and if it's too close in real life if you are too close to another person you will feel um, uncomfortable you tend to get back so but if it's too far away but you can still like you, you are not feeling you are, you're related to that person and then the conversation is break so that's why I would recommend like I draw it on the on the slides here to put it in somewhere between two and one meters it's the recommended distance and then just adjust the height so that's the first thing distance and height of the camera so I'm gonna just put it lower a little bit and then the second is the placement of the camera so like what I said uh, the camera has two lenses and it captures two separate videos and then the software is going to stitch the footage together into a 360 spherical scene and then on the stitching line so where the, the, the image is being stitched and merged together so the objects on the line will sometimes be distorted and the stitching line is where the seam around between two lenses it is so when you placement place the camera you want to face the camera lenses to most important stuff such as the storyteller or the object to avoid pointing the scene towards the face of the storyteller so this is the wrong way so don't do it instead you should place it like this so the lens one of the lenses is facing the someone's face because if you play, point the scene towards the camera it's very likely during the stitching the storyteller's face will be distorted and that's something you don't want it to have and then it's 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 very hard to collect, to to correct in the post work process just remember to always point the lens towards the storyteller's face instead of using the scene and then the third is the third is to 
Remember to keep the camera always upright on the selfie stick, whether the camera is standing on the table or if you are holding it in, in a tilted way. There's no need to adjust the, 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 the camera angle because the 360 camera captures everything and it has the capability to uh, correct its uh, orientation by gravity and the gyroscope inside. So the scene is always be, always be upright, whatever how you hold it. So they just like to make sure the camera and the selfie stick is always in one line and up sticks, uh, up standing, standing up. There's no need to adjust it. So just leave it like there. And then if you if you tilt it or if you adjust the angle, the selfie stick will be visible in the scene, and that's something you don't want. And so these are the three do's and don'ts during the shooting, and it's like the useful tips. And then I'm going to move on to talk about the scene arrangement, triangle rules, and what you're going to do when you're actually capturing the, the footage. So the triangle rule is about how you can arrange uh, the story elements in the scene. So normally, uh, the essential idea is to place the camera, the, the ROI or the region of interest or object on which you're going to talk and then the storyteller on the points of three points of a triangle as you see on the screen. And then, then when the viewer is looking at watching the 360 video from the point of the camera, and then he or she will find it's relatively easy for him or her to find that the object or the scene and then the storyteller in a relatively easy angle. So the viewer does do not need to the viewer does not need to turn head dramatically to find the thing you're being talked about and then the storyteller on a very far distance. So that will be very tired because you have to look around all the time, make it very uncomfortable. And following the triangle setup, then the viewer can see both you, the storyteller, and then the object in, in a relatively easy place and then they don't have to like turn ahead frequently. And whether the object is far away or in a lower, in a close distance, the triangle always stands. And even it's it's on a moving moving position. So like I would like to recommend just holding the camera on the side instead of in front of you. And so on the, if on the side and the viewer while moving together with you can also see you and then the object at the same time. So that's the triangle rules. So what about if in a scene there are more than one people? So not only the camera and then it's more like a group talk and then the camera is becoming one of the members and then the star teller also needs to adjust not only the camera, aka the viewer, but also other people physically being there. So in those kind of scenarios, you just want to place the camera among the audience. So not place the camera somewhere that people are not going to be, such as everyone is around the table, but you place the camera on, in the middle of the table is something you want to avoid. Like what I said in the earlier slides that place the camera where the viewer would normally be. So no one will be sitting or standing in the middle of the table when everyone is around it. So don't do that. And then place the camera in normal place, but will still maintain the triangle relationship, like what I see in the what I show in the slides here. So even everyone is in the shot, and then object, the storyteller is still the important part. They should have their priority. So maintain the triangle relationship. So most of the time, the viewer can still see the object you are talking about, and then the storyteller, which is you, in relatively easy fashion. But at the same time, the viewer will see there are other people's among him or her because the camera is there. So he will get this feeling that, ah, I'm among a group of people that are being taken through a guided tour or something. And then that will be more natural way. So this is the triangle rule which should be maintained while even there's more than one viewer in a shot. The second thing I would like to introduce is using attention guidance. It's because in the 360 video, the image is all around the viewer and then everything is being captured. The viewer is very high likely to look at the other thing that he or she thinks is interesting instead of following what you are talking. And then that is nothing, something not going to happen in regular video because the viewers don't have the freedom to choose. But now they got the freedom to look around, it's very likely you are talking about this painting here. They are more interesting at thinking about what's the this, this stature or the sculpture there on the wall. And then they totally miss what you are talking about. And then you don't know that in, in ahead because when you are capture the video, you don't know where viewer is going to look at when he or she actually watching it. So that's the problem we call it a formal or fear of missing out or the narrative paradox. So you want to avoid something like that. And we would recommend using attention guidance. So you can guide the viewer's attention to 
where he or she should be att pay attention to and not getting lost. And so and what we came up with a set of uh, attention guidance is the gesture you're going to use when you were just capturing the video so we don't need any post-processing work. You just do those gestures, we call them action units or like a guidance, it's kind of directorial cue you're going to use and then there are several ones such as maintain eye contact just looking at the camera when, you, when you're speaking and that's what we naturally do um, in, in normal life so like when I'm looking at the camera now when I'm talking so you will feel like I'm addressing you and then you are less likely to look away because you know that the focus should be I'm looking at you, you should be focusing on me same thing with 360 um, capturing the camera I should look at it another thing is if I want to show something far away I would intend to use a pointing gesture such as looking at that and then I'm turned to look at the object I'm pointing at the same time. And because we naturally do it in a daily conversation, we are, we are kind of hardwired in our brain to follow when someone visible in, in front of us doing the turning head and the pointing gesture. So we will be most likely to naturally follow that and then now see the thing that's being shown. Similar as something nearby, such as if I'm going to show this phone, they're going to look at the phone saying, hey, look at this. So you will see my eye gaze in respective to the camera. I am turning away, looking at the object, and then pointing at the object. And because the viewer can see it, they will naturally follow in my pointing and my eye gaze towards the thing is where it's shown here. So you can see some of the examples in the a screenshot here, so they are doing the pointing locking gesture in the yellow boxes and you can find more examples and if you're following the two YouTube links down there. I'm going to send you the slides so you can just use and uh, following the, the links to have it on YouTube. The next thing I'm going to talk about is audio. So audio quality is always important because if your viewer cannot hear what you're talking about clearly, he or she will get lost and lose interest in the content very soon. So audio quality also matters. So normally, if you just want to capture the environmental sound, you can use the onboard microphone that is on the uh, camera already, so that captures the environment sound around it. But if you want to be more advanced and more realistic, you can use the ambisonic microphone, uh, those dedicated ones that are used for capturing environment sound. So it'll be spatial audio. People can feel all the sound coming from different angles from their source, such as the picture you see on the slides that I stack at the, this, um, like round camera, uh, the microphone, which is spatial microphone on top of the camera. So, but normally we don't not use it in a, in a normal day scenario because it needs more uh, advanced techniques. And you can use just use the microphone on the camera to capture environment sound. But if people are talking or storyteller's voice, I would re recommend using a remote microphone. So, uh, such as the Rode mic is normally at two receiving units is one end is on the camera to, to just directly send the signal to the camera and the other side is wirelessly uh, on, on the speaker so the, the, the speaking voice will be more clearly captured and then directly recorded into the camera, into the video. So the, the, whether the, peop, the, the storyteller is standing a little bit further away or something and then his, vo her, his or her speech voice will be always clean, that's also important. And then I will show them in the uh, like a separate video, the hands-on session about audio capture, but just pay attention that speaking audio, environment audio, you need to like plan ahead because captured audio is also an important thing. And then last but not least, I will just simply give you an overview of the workflow of 360 production because we talked about uh, preparing, setup, or the gears and then the planning ahead. So how you're gonna plan everything before you actually go hit the recording button and also what are you going to do when you are actually doing capturing such as uh, the gestures because the guiding attention the action units you're going to use so these are the just a little part of the workflow so when you have a capturing next thing you're going to do is you always export and it just you're going to fetch all the videos and then to get it to into a dedicated software, whether on a mobile phone, most likely will be on a PC because for the power. And then you're going to stitch them. And before you're stitching, those raw footage are not supposed to be watched because they are in, in a special form and you can't normally watch it. So you stitch it to get the, the final footage and then you can watch it. But this sometimes you need some editing, so they cut, do some cutting or like orientation changing. I'm going to introduce them later. And then you can do some post-processing such as on add-on captions, add-on subtitles if you need, and then do all the final touches and then export it as your final product. And eventually you're going to get your final footage ready, your final production, 
and you're gonna export the footage and you're gonna send up to online platform whether send it to uh, other people so you can watch it online via such as YouTube or other online platforms in on a browser or a mobile phone or you just load the footage into VR headsets like what I said how people are gonna watch it in early um, early chapters so you're gonna distribute it out so that's like a final stage and in the 360 video uh, post-production about these knowledges, uh, there are things such as how you're gonna export the raw footage and then you're gonna arrange them because if you capture several, many contents and there will be a lot of raw footages, how you're gonna do the asset arrangement and you're gonna stitch them using the um, like software such as Insta360 Studio and then you wanna do some trim and then crop and export, upload. So I will show them uh, like on a extra hands-on tutorial, which is the second episode, I'm gonna do actually do them, and I'm gonna show how you're gonna do on those software. So you're gonna be learn a better idea, but they are not going to be covered in detail in today's episode. So, so a summary of what I have said is I started about talking about what this 360 video, and then also how you're gonna produce them and what is involved, such as 360 camera and other supporting gear, equipment and software. And then importantly, I covered several guidelines for making preparation to use 360 video. When you decided the scenario, you, you, you choose the actual going to use them. So there are a lot of things involved in preparation. And then uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna avoid uh, when you are capturing 360 video? And also, and there are uh, guidelines such as the setup, the arrangement of the uh, everything on the scene, and then the rules you can abide. And also remember to use uh, kind of cues to uh, guide viewers' attention. So these are important things to bear in mind when you when you capture 360 videos. And then I give a brief overview of and the entire production workflow of start from capturing to how you eventually get to video to ready for distribute. So the workflow is overview. And in a coming up episode, so what I'm going to talk about is I'm gonna do a hands-on live demo of from the cameras. So I'm gonna do introducing the cameras, how we're going to use them, set up, and I'm gonna actually show how I captured content, export it to computer, and then do all the stitching kind of stuff. So these will be covered in next stage. So, and also touch something about post-production. Then you will get a better idea how everything is run the step-by-step -step from beginning to the end. But I hope today's video give you like a, a introduce and a, the like welcoming start to, for you to learn about 360 videos and 360 cameras and what they are, how they are being captured. And because you have your own gear, so you can just go and capture them, play them around, get yourself familiar with the tech, and then to do some trial and error because everyone makes mistakes, and then to get yourself familiar with such technology so you have better be prepared when the actual project's coming up and you are going to capture something that is serious and important so you will not be like in a mess or you don't know, like make a lot of mistakes, something like that. And I hope this video gave a, a good idea of what is there and then what you are upcoming on the downstream. But yeah, but, but I think you will be doing well with the thing. It's eventually just capturing videos. Just, just need some different mindset. And then yeah, hope you enjoy this video and then see you in the next one.